Uh, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to what has been the first webinar type presentation for communication going out to our community in regards to uh, our annual plan process. Um, so we welcome those that have uh, come online and joined us. And I'd just like to welcome who we've got here with us uh, this morning. So myself, obviously, Toby Adams, the, the Mayor of the Hauraki District. Uh, we've got Duncan Petey, who is uh, ELT member and in charge of um, basically the rates uh, and the money coming in and the money going out. And we have Deputy Mayor uh, Paul Milner, uh, who is on my right, but on your left when you're looking. And then I've got our Chair of our Manaki to Order Committee, uh, Anne-Marie Spicer, who is also the Chair of the Waihi Ward. Morning. So, so welcome. Um, well, this is a, a Zoom interactive webinar type scenario. So if you are online and you are there, please have your microphones on mute. And if you have a question um, regarding any of the presentations or the slides that we're presenting, please raise your hand. And when we get a break, we'll come to you and answer your question. Or you can obviously use the Q&A function down below and type a question in. And if we see questions in there, we'll answer those if you wish to remain anonymous. Um, and after you've spoken, just lower your hand and continue to mute yourself afterwards. So let's uh, get into it and what's on our agenda this morning. So our agenda is a overview of what we're consulting on, which is obviously our annual plan for our 2022-2023 draft annual plan and the proposed introductions of SOAPs. And we'll go into what SOAPs means and explain how SOAPs may or may not affect your property and any other associated policy changes. Um, so, and then obviously we'll cover off on some uh, questions. We'll cover off on some facts and then we'll ask for some questions from you guys and have a bit of discussion time. So we're seeking feedback on the following, the, account, the council's amended budget and work program for the following year, the council's proposed introduction of separately used or inhabited parts, which we will be calling SUIPs of a rating unit as a method of charging some annual charge rates, and the proposed changes to our emission policies. And those changes will really reflect any changes we make to SUIPs if they're accepted. So the annual plan and how and how our work program has changed for the 2022-2023 financial year. So our work program is largely business as usual. Um, however, the issues that the rest of the country are experiencing, uh, i.e. grocery prices, fuel prices, et cetera, uh, we're experiencing those too. So there's also um, interest rate changes, uh, price rises, supply issues, and we are experiencing one of the most all-time high building activities, which is affecting our building control team and our resource consent activities. So there's been a high level of activity in the construction sector, which also affects our ability to complete our capital works program. So we have to shift a few things around. So we've updated the costs and the timing of our programs to reflect all of these issues. So that uh, ends up with a rates change for the coming year of 3.95% on average for non-water rates and 7.5% increase on average for water rates. There's multiple factors that affect rates for us in the next financial year. And there's a few factors affecting our rates in our 2022-2023 budget. One of those is property revaluation, and that's a real big one. Then we've got our amended work program, which is our draft annual plan, which we're coming out with now, our 2022-23 draft annual plan. And then obviously the proposed changes to our SOAPs, which are for some of our annual charges. So our UAGC, uh, a charge that everyone pays. So some background um, on SOAPs. Um, we've been aware of this inequity for quite a while and it was flagged during our long term plan process in 2021. We want to slice the pie differently so that it's more fair and more equitable. This is not gonna change the uh, total amount of rates that we collect, it'll still be the same amount. But council is proposing that this change happens so that those with one dwelling on their property are not covering the costs of those with lots of dwellings on their property. And there are some exa examples of that coming up. So some of those examples are retirement villages. Uh, we know we've got a lot of that activity happening in our district now. Um, farms or lifestyle properties with more than one dwelling on it, i.e. for a worker um, or rented out to, a, to, a, to um, somebody different. Um, multiple commercial activities within one building. So you've got a large building and it's got um, three or four different types of businesses within that accommodation. Uh, we've also got um, residential accommodation 
that is happening in that business premises. So there's all types of different things that will trigger it. Home-based businesses, uh, and we're not talking about uh, one-man bands or two-man bands, um, or two or more houses, flats or apartments that are on one current rating unit. Uh, there are options in our policy for rented residential accommodation where it's rented out individually per room. So we're not obviously talking about where you've got uh, a border or a flatmate obviously in your house. Um, or a separate dwelling that's there for short-term accommodation or like an Airbnb type scenario. So the picture on the screen now just shows a basic visual of what we're talking about. On the left, the blue houses there are four houses and they're each on their own separate lot. Whereas on the right, there's the same four houses except they're all on one title. So in future, we're proposing those four houses would pay a separate um, uniform charge. So how will these sewers affect our different ratepayers? So 94% of our properties, this will this change would mean that they'll more likely pay less, approximately $90 per property. The remaining 6% of the properties with multiple sewers will pay more, approximately $930 per sewer. So we've got some frequently asked questions related to sewers. And, and the first one is, I have an additional small dwelling from family and friends who only stay sometimes. Will I have to pay more? We're proposing to remit the second UAGC and ward annual charge for those with a second dwelling or flat where it's only used to accommodate non-paying family and guests. So that means that you could get a charge, but you could approach council to have that charge remitted. And another question is, what if I have a residential accommodation rented individually per room or a granny flat on my property? Well, these would only be charged an additional sewer if they have a separate kitchen sink bathroom and entrance coming onto the property. Uh, if, for example, you're accommodating family members in a granny flat and they're not paying rent, then a remission can be applied for and you wouldn't get charged that extra sewer. So what defines an additional sewer? An additional residential sewer would have a separate entrance, not necessarily external, a separate bathroom, separate kitchen sink, and a separate living sleeping area from the main house. So basically it's a self-contained area. So another question, we have a second dwelling, but no one lives in it. Does this change apply to me? Well, yes, it does apply, even if no one is currently living in the building or the accommodation. But once again, you can apply for that remission. So how does the change to serve affect my farm? If your farm has only one dwelling, then you will continue to pay one new AGC and one ward annual charge. In fact, you'll pay less. But a farm that has two or more dwellings, i.e. workers' houses, you'll pay a UAGC and a ward annual charge per separate part. For example, for every farmhouse, if you're in the Waihi ward, the UAGC and the ward annual charge per house is $939. For the Pyro ward, it's $974. And for the Plains ward, it'll be $876. We want to hear from you because we know this is quite technical uh, and we've been uh, given <laughs> numerous amount of time to be able to look over this and understand what it really means. But as Councillor um, Spicer mentioned earlier, it's about slicing up the pie. So the pie that we're collecting, which is the total rates, does not change, but it's, and everyone gets a slice of that pie. What we're proposing to change is that everyone's paying a fairer price for that slice of pie, or everyone's paying their, um, the, the same, uh, not the same amount, but the, the required amount that they should be for their slice of the pie, and no one's paying for somebody else's slice of the pie. So it's, uh, it is really technical, but if there are any burning questions and you'd like to ask, now's your chance. Uh, or you can always contact myself or any of the councillors within the Hauraki district to get further information. So are there any questions out there currently? I've got a, a question that was on our Facebook page from someone which, uh, and she asks, um, could someone please define the word dwelling? Does this include outside cabin, an outside cabin or a caravan and bus? So uh, an outside cabin, um, no, an outside caravan or a bus, no, because they come under transportable type structures. So it's a permanent type structure that's um, fixed to the ground uh, and it's got a, a kitchen sink, its own bathroom facilities. Um, so pretty much someone can live and be contained in that dwelling on their own and not need to use the main house. That is what is considered a separate dwelling. <clears throat> and I've just got one more question that's come from someone on home-based businesses and you've talked about that a little bit, but if say someone is a, a graphic designer, runs their business from home, or say they um, are contracted to the mine and um, are very rarely at home, but that's where they might run their accounts. Uh, would they call it have to then pay a, a further sort of charge? 
No, I mean, when I mean, we look at today's technology and where we've come in this COVID world, uh, probably a lot of you have worked from home uh, in the last 12 months to 18 months. Um, so those that are uh, just a, a small operation working at home as a home-based business, then no. But obviously, if you start to grow or start to manufacture things or um, have more than two or three employees and start to have an effect on um, services coming in and out, then yes, you'd be uh, needing to pay a, a portion of the business for rate. Yes, so if those generally you would have already been identified and, and you would already be paying a ward business rate. Um, so those properties are likely to be affected by the additional sewer. Uh, if you haven't already been identified, then it, it's unlikely that you would be affected by the sewer change. One, one question I've been asked many times is, why are we doing this now and why have we never had it? Because a lot of councils around New Zealand have sewers um, and we're one of the last councils to sort of bring this policy in. We haven't really had the need for it because we haven't been inundated with large complexes like um, boarding houses or um, retirement villages um, and such as the like. But uh, things have obviously evolved and changing. And now we have large type retirement village structures coming in uh, with multiple uh, families and new people coming into the district. And currently under the way we've got our rating system now, then we're subsidizing part of them being able to use our facilities, our parks, our grounds, our libraries, our swimming pools. Um, we're helping to subsidise that. So we just want to make that a bit more fairer. So everyone's paying their fair share when they're using those facilities uh, that we have in our district. So that's one of the reasons we brought that in now to try and fair it up for our ratepayers. There are multiple ways that you can get in contact with us. We'll have a um, slide pop up on screen uh, momentarily with our technical expert, Deputy Mayor Milner, is um, frantically searching through his PowerPoint presentation. Um, you can get in contact with us, with us um, at the office, at any office, whether it's be in Waihi, Pairo, or the Plains and Ngāti there. Um, so you can phone in, you can email us at info at hauraki.dc.govt.nz uh, uh, or get onto the website. All our councillor details are on there. Email one of the councillors, pick up the phone, ring them, uh, drop us a line on Facebook. Whatever way that it works for you to get in touch, uh, we'll get back with the answers that you need. And we'll just check our um, Q&A page just to see if there's any Q&A questions that have come there from people online watching. Nothing else by the look of it. No, just the ones. So for those that are um, turned up this morning, really appreciate it. Uh, this is something new um, and we wanna try and get the messages out as far and wide as we can through multiple channels. And this is just another way to be able to interact with those that find it difficult at different times of the day to come to public meetings or um, just want to interact with face-to-face uh, -face with us here at Council. So just probably worth mentioning one other way that people can come out and see councillors. There are ward forums coming up in all of the wards over the next few weeks before the end of the month. So keep an eye out on Council's Facebook page and there'll be information about where those meetings are in Natia Township, in Pyro and in Waihi. Awesome. Really neat to see you and talk to you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, have a fantastic Easter and enjoy some uh, good sunshine out there after a little bit of rain and uh, look after yourselves. Take care, everyone.